Christmas at Designers Homes Across America by Katherine K. McMillan and Patricia Hart McMillan. Katherine K. McMillan is the former lifestyle editor of Florida Magazine, and she has co-authored a dozen books on various aspects of design. She and her mother, Patricia Hart McMillan, have co-authored two books together, including this one. Patricia has authored 15 books on design and architecture, and she remains active as a design consultant. Rose Gilbert, a syndicated design columnist, writes in the foreword of this book, I have a small confession. If a woman can be a peeping Tom, then I am one, but only at Christmas time. When the tree lights begin to sparkle inside my neighbors' homes, I can't resist looking in on their holidays. There are so many ways of dressing up one's home for this most colorful and joyous season of the year. She continues to write, Christmas has always been a magical time for me. My childhood Christmases remain a colorful blur of chubby tree lights and little bubble lights. Our first snows came in boxes that we used to blizzard this tiny landscape we created under the tree. I also remember the tinsel icicles that had to be draped painstakingly one by one and only from the tips of the tree branches. This book invites you into the homes of such designers as Christopher Radko, John Lyle, Cecil Hayes, Mary Helen McCoy, Howard Wiggins, Keith Carrington, and many more. This home belongs to Christopher Radko. Most of Christopher Radko's personal Christmas ornaments date back to the early 19th century. The New York Times has dubbed him the Czar of Christmas Present, all because he reignited the love that millions have for vintage Christmas tree ornaments. Christopher says that his ornaments grace the trees of Bruce Springsteen, Dolly Parton, Elton John, Al Pacino, Mikhail Baryshnikov, and Julie Andrews. He also says that it was Barbara Streisand that convinced him to make Hanukkah ornaments. Among collectors of his ornaments were Jimmy Stewart, Lauren Bacall, Katherine Hepburn, Gregory Peck, and Elizabeth Taylor. Gary Mullins, a designer from Hazelhurst, Georgia, displays his collection of nutcrackers in his den, otherwise known as the Nutcracker Room. It contains more than 2,500 nutcrackers. Almost 400 color images treat the readers to dazzling holiday visions by leading designers. Scenes usually reserved for family and friends. The reader is invited into these personal spaces to be inspired by their decorating strategies and hands-on ingenuity while gleaning insider tips for preserving trees, both fresh and artificial, and caring for ornaments. See how designers use unusual color schemes and centerpieces, and how one designer uses broken ornaments as a light catching base for glass vases. Music 
This book is a treasure trove and showcases one-of-a-kind holiday ideas from some of the nation's most talented interior designers who share not only their aesthetic tastes, but also family holiday traditions and favorite Christmas rituals. Christmas at Designers Homes Across America, written by Katherine K. McMillan and Patricia Hart McMillan. This book is 256 pages. It is published by Schiffer Publishing Limited, and it retails for $45. Today for my thoughtful gift suggestion, it's something you can make yourself, an orange pomander tree. All you need is a small foam tree form, some spiked popsicle sticks, and both of these can be found at any craft store. About 15 small oranges, some whole cloves, and greenery from your yard. This is a great idea for a hostess gift or for neighbors. Pomanders are a tradition in the fall and winter, especially at Christmas. They are a quaint reminder of the days when plants were the main decorations for Christmas. Pine boughs decked the mantle, and Christmas trees were bejeweled with cranberries, cookies, and candles. The pomander, which we think of as fruits embedded with dried cloves, was another of the traditional decorations made with love to brighten up the winter holidays. But the history of this fragrant tradition goes back further than we might imagine. There was a time when oranges symbolized the Christmas season, since they were so rare that they were only purchased for this special holiday, and spices were imported from far-off places, making cloves another luxury item. But going back even further into history, the pomander was once a different type of status symbol, so precious that no one from the middle class could have afforded one. Pomanders were once made from gold or silver and were one of the many scent dispersing devices invented in the Middle Ages to ward off unpleasant odors, which were commonly associated with illness and unhappiness. Pomanders can be found in many portraits of royalty, like this one of Queen Elizabeth I. In the 18th and 19th centuries, the pomander was a gift often presented at Christmas. To make this tree, simply take your oranges and with the pointed end of the wooden craft stick, place small holes into the orange. By doing this, it just makes it easier to place the cloves into the orange. Then randomly place the cloves. You can make a pattern or just evenly spread them out. The fragrance of the cloves and the orange was really wonderful. When you're finished placing the cloves in the orange and you're ready to attach it to the foam, push the spiked end of the popsicle stick through the top of the orange. And place the protruding end into the tree. Starting with the greenery first, place a generous amount all around the tree. It may be difficult to secure some of the branches, but when you attach the oranges, it usually fastens the greenery very well. 
and keep doing this until the entire tree form is covered. I did use my glue gun in a couple of places to make sure the tree was fully covered with greenery. I added an orange on top of my tree and placed a red bow on it. This was my first orange pomander tree and I was pleased with the result. It was fairly easy, it's pretty, but the fragrance is really the appeal of this gift. I've finished decorating the living room. I've hung holly from the chandelier with a special bauble that I received on my 21st birthday. My birthday is in May, but this ornament was draped with lily of the valley, which is the flower for the month of May. I decorate this room with light traditional touches. I like to take gifts and spread them around the house and not just under the Christmas tree. There's something about seeing a gift in a random place. It piques the interest and brings joy. This year will be the 96th Christmas to be celebrated in this house. Several years ago, we contacted the granddaughter of George Bailey who built the home in 1926. She was 95 years old and shared with us that she spent many Christmases sitting by this fireplace and falling asleep waiting for Santa. She also told us that she remembered two nutcrackers that her grandmother placed on each side of the hearth. So I thought I would do the same. I have several pieces of Duncan Fife style furniture in this room. Duncan Fife was born in Scotland and immigrated to the United States in 1791. This nativity scene was purchased by my mother in 1962, and I remember as a child examining every detail with wonder. I'd like to wish everyone a happy and joyous Thanksgiving, and thank you for watching. I hope you will join me again on Saturday for another review.